Hello, it's Noisy Andrew, and welcome to episode 3 of the Bayswater Station Upgrade video series. Today, we're going to talk about what track configuration they might use to achieve the junction that they're going to make. We are obviously going to look at the progress they've made, and there's going to be some fireworks. But first, Let's go and look at the Hotham Street bridge end of the project. You can see over this week, we're up to day 18, 19, 20 now, that there's not a huge difference to look at. There's a bit to see, but um, not a great change. Let's go back and look at the very first day of the project here. And you can see that is a great change. At the eastern end of the station, uh, you can see the lines are all connected up on top of the bank now. Um, and there's a bunch of quite large uh, footing works, foundations. I'm going to talk about these concrete foundations in the next video because I think it tells us something about what else is going to happen later in this project at the eastern end of the station. Now let's talk about the track layout. There are two tracks that come under the Hotham Street Bridge please see previous picture and they have to divide into effectively six although the minimum they're probably going to need through the railway station is four uh, because there probably isn't room for six tracks through the station so my guess is between the Bayswater station and the Hotham Street Bridge is the main place the junction will occur that there's already a junction east of the station where the line to High Wickham and the airport branches south, but let's not worry about that. That was constructed last year, or commissioned last year. Um, so we'll, we'll just take that for what it is. Somehow we have to get an extra two lines out of Bayswater Station, heading north up the Tonkin Highway to Allenbrook. Now I think probably I would just do it like this. But if you go back to uh, this image here, you can see this is not what we've done. And this leads me to think that part of what we have here is an intermediate track configuration. Um, so I think this is possibly going to be changed. In If you read through the comments of these videos, uh, in the last video, or maybe it was the first video, um, someone whose name escapes me, I'll put it up, there we are, uh, suggested there was going to be five tracks through the station, uh, two for each of the island platforms, the up and down line, and then one through the middle at no platform so that the standard gauge trains, being the Prospector and the Indian Pacific, can pass through the whole shebang without having to go past a platform, uh, which probably means that, you know, they don't need to be held up by trains waiting in the station to load and unload. Sort of makes sense. Anyway, this is the configuration we have now. We basically have a turn back siding uh, in between the two main lines and a holding like dead end at the end of it uh, where you could like park stuff. Uh, and it, when, I, when I, this first went in, I didn't see any electrification going over it. So I assumed it might just be for work vehicles for the second half of the job. Because one of the things I've realized this week is that all those big concrete beams and piers that are supporting the station are only half the job. They're going to do all of this again, I think, because now that I look at what's happening, there isn't room for four tracks, or five tracks, uh, on top of the bridge that they've built where the station is. So over the next, I don't know, probably 18 months, we are probably going to see uh, all of this here uh, repeated. Uh, basically uh, doubling. Now, I promised you some fireworks. So when you're uh, changing your track or laying track, you're going to have to join the lengths of rail together. In the old days, this was done with what's called a fish plate. Basically, two plates of steel with holes drilled in them, holes drilled in the track as well, and a bunch of bolts going through. And this is great. It's like a convenient way of... Um, joining track together if something happens to the track you can just pull one piece out and bolt another piece in there's a problem though 
For this to work, you need to leave gaps at all the joints so on hot and cold days, the rail can expand and contract without getting too excited about itself. So, so the bolt holes are actually bigger than the bolts so that there's a little bit of wiggle room in these joints. Now the problem with that is every time a wheel goes over the joint, it hammers. Um, and you can imagine if you bash steel enough, it gets hardened, it's called work hardening and eventually your joints fail. Um, so yeah, these sort of joints, especially if you're using a train that goes quite quickly, they eventually fail, like they crack and break. So what do you do? Well, you weld your track together. Uh, and there's obviously lots of ways of welding. You could use electric arc and um, bizo, but that's not what we're going to use here. We're going to use fireworks to weld this track together. So this is called thermite welding. It's where you actually get um, a chemical reaction going that produces a lot of heat and melts iron into the gap. Now with all welding, you need to get the material you're welding at least as hot as the welding material you're adding to it. So the first thing we do is we heat the joint up. So actually, the first thing we do is put a mold around the joint made of clay. Um, at least that's what it looks like. Uh, and it's in a metal box, but it's basically just a mold around the railway track. Um, and then on top of that, we put uh, the material for our thermite weld. But before we do that, we put a blowtorch into that clay to dry the clay out and get the ends of the track basically red hot. So a big gas blowtorch goes in the, in the join. And then we put the, uh, the tin of welding material on top of the mold and set fire to it with the blowtorch. Oh, dude, don't stand there. <laughs> I thought that was going to be more spectacular, hey? Oh, there we go. And the way this works is aluminium. Aluminium is an extremely reactive metal. It burns really well. But if we're joining railway together, aluminium is our friend. Those of you that did chemistry in um, year 11 and 12 or whatever the equivalent is in that part of the world, in your part of the world, the part of the world in which you live, will have come across something called a redox reaction. And if I think back, I think that's what this is. We start off with aluminium and an oxidizer. And in our case, the oxidizer is rust, iron oxide. If we get this hot enough for the aluminium to burn, it'll grab the oxygen out of the iron, which leaves the iron by itself as molten iron, which can flow into our weld joint. And we get al aluminium oxide on top as a slag. Obviously, aluminium oxide weighs a lot less than iron does. So if you get the whole thing molten hot, the aluminium oxide floats to the top and floats off and the iron sinks to the bottom and welds the rail together. Magic. Once you've uh, done this, basically there's like a hydraulic ram system with like a big cutting thing that you just, you smash off the mold and then you run this hydraulic ram while that's, and it's hand pumped while the uh, 
while everything is still red hot and it just cuts away the excess or most of the excess and then you run a grinding machine over the top of the whole weld to smooth it out and your, your wheel hammering has gone away. The other thing about doing this is for some inexplicable reason this actually helps deal with the, rail, the, the track expansion problem to some degree as well. So you don't need a shitload of joints all along your line anymore. So with welded railway track, it tends to be in very, very long lengths and the actual joints for expansion are much fewer than you would have if you used the fish plate system. Anyway, I think that's enough for this week. Next week, we'll talk about signaling um, and do a bit of a wrap up. The line is due to open on the 28th now. They've put the, um, the opening date back uh, two days. Uh, and you know, I'm okay with that. This is like a really big job. Uh, the fact that it's run a couple of days over time is like, I, if I was the manager, I wouldn't be too upset with that. It's obviously awkward for all the people that have been having to catch buses along this, what is usually a quite busy railway line. Um, but, uh, but you know, I think it looks like it's gone reasonably well. Anyway, if you've enjoyed learning a little bit about what's happening here, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll be back in about a week to do a wrap up of this part of the Bayswater station upgrade. Now that I know, well, I think I know that it's actually a bit bigger than I first thought, first thought, first thought, first, first.